A deep, chesty bawl echoes from rimrock to rimrock, rolls down the mountain, and fades into the far blackness of the night. It is an outburst of wild defiant sorrow, and of contempt for all the adversities of the world. Every living thing, and perhaps many a dead one as well, pays heed to that call. To the deer, it is a reminder of the way of all flesh, to the pine, a forecast of midnight scuffles and of blood upon the snow, to the coyote, a promise of gleanings to come, to the cowman, a threat of red ink at the bank, to the hunter, a challenge of fang against bullet. Yet behind these obvious and immediate hopes and fears, there lies a deeper meaning, known only to the mountain itself. Only the mountain has lived long enough to listen objectively to the howl of a wolf. Aldo Leopold, thinking like a mountain. The Grey, a 2011 film co-written by director Joe Carnahan and novelist Ian McKenzie Jeffers and based on Jeffers' short story, Ghost Walker, stars Liam Neeson as John Otway, a sharpshooter employed by an oil company to protect workers from wolves on the north slope of Alaska. While traveling to Anchorage for time off, Otway's plane crashes somewhere in the remote, bitterly cold Alaskan wilderness and he and the remaining passengers attempt to survive the elements and frequent attacks by a pack of wolves. This movie has been frequently criticized for its inaccurate portrayal of wolves to make them look scarier than they actually are in real life. For instance, wolf attacks are exceedingly rare and there are no records, absolutely none, of a person being killed by a wolf in the last 120 years in North America. The Grey generally portrays wolves as enormous beasts with glowing eyes, villains fit for a monster movie. And while these criticisms and others are entirely justified, they often ignore what the movie is actually saying. And I say that as a wildlife ecologist in the Western US. Wolf demonization is incredibly harmful to conservation and science-based wildlife management. But does the Grey actually demonize wolves? <laughs> well, yeah, duh. And I think that is bad, but to say that and walk away is dishonest and does a disservice to the movie. The Grey is a thoughtful, melancholy film that constantly shows reverence for nature despite its apathetic cruelty. And wolves, while centered as villains, are not the most destructive force in the film. A storm brings down the plane, killing, presumably, dozens of people immediately. Burke dies of hypoxia. Talget becomes grievously injured from a fall. Diaz, physically and emotionally exhausted, allows himself to die. Henrik drowns. Of the named characters, only two are functionally killed by wolves, which are Flannery and Hernandez. Of course, wolves lead to the deaths of more characters. Their presence alone drives decisions that get people killed, and they of course finish off Talget and Diaz. But this choice to minimize the direct role of wolves in the deaths of characters serves the Grey's themes. This film is not a monster movie. It is about humans struggling to survive and struggling to find reasons to struggle at all. Like Stories of Old has a fantastic video on this, which I'll link in the description. However, for this video, I'm not as interested in what this film has to say about people as I am in what it has to say about nature. And this is where thematically, the gray gets a bit muddy. The wolves could easily be read as simply being forces of nature, physical manifestations of indifference to human survival. The cold kills, altitude kills, storms kill, water kills, wolves kill, nature kills, and it kills indiscriminately. But as icy and miserable as the film looks, audiences need a threat they can see, hear, and be afraid of. The wolves then become tools for plot progression and a thematic anchor for audiences. But is nature's indifference really the theme embodied by wolves? Wolves are inextricably part of nature, but they are not indifferent in the movie. As Otway explains, If we're close to their den, and if we're within that radius, then they'll come after us. There is purpose in their assault, but not for survival. What's more, the Grey actually initially dismisses wolves as an existential threat to the plane crash survivors. Even after Otway's attack at the beginning, he says they should be more focused on finding food than worrying about wolves, that the animals are probably only passing through, and that they attacked him because he was threatening. Even after the wolves kill Hernandez, Otway's explanation still centers the humans as the threat. What would they we're not harming them. It's not for food. We're a threat. We don't belong here. That's it. The survivor's presence has disturbed nature to the point of violent retaliation. Humans, then, are outside of nature, separate from it, intruders. Thus, the wolves are vessels through which nature punishes the survivors for their trespass. But 
we can't read the storm that downs the plane, the cold, the altitude, or the water as also being instruments of retribution. These forces are never given agency, they simply exist. So, The Great portrays nature as being indifferent to human suffering while simultaneously telling the audience that nature is actively trying to harm the protagonists. This contradiction precludes a simple nature-based thematic reading of the film, but perhaps that complexity is the point. Nature is not villainous. The Grey is shot beautifully by cinematographer Masanabu Takianagi, whose shots of mountain vistas and snowy forests are accompanied by Mark Streitenfeld's elegant score. The Grey clearly reveres nature, in spite of its capacity to elicit suffering. Diaz, upon accepting death, remarks on the beauty in front of him. Turn around and look at that. I feel like that's all for me. How do I beat that? When would it ever be better? The film does not disagree with Diaz. It does not portray his surrender as defeat. The film and audience knows this is the best that Diaz has ever and will ever get. And the scenery is not separate from the wolves. Diaz knows the wolves will kill him. His acceptance of death is also an acceptance of wolves as part of nature. And this acceptance of wolves is critical to what the Grey says about nature and about wolves themselves. Watching this movie, I was reminded of Aldo Leopold's essay, Thinking Like a Mountain in which Leopold recalls his experience killing a wolf. Out on a hunting trip, Leopold and his party see a wolf with grown pups ford a river, and the men indiscriminately shoot into the group of animals, killing the adult and maiming a pup. We reached the old wolf in time to watch a fierce green fire dying in her eyes. I realized then, and have known ever since, that there was something new to me in those eyes, something known only to her and to the mountain. I was young then and full of trigger itch. I thought that because fewer wolves meant more deer, that no wolves would mean hunter's paradise. But after seeing the green fire die, I sensed that neither the wolf nor the mountain agreed with such a view. Leopold goes on to describe the ecological damage done by the extirpation of wolves across much of Western North America. Ecosystems collapse without their presence. He does not dismiss the threat that wolves pose to cattle, but he does accuse cattle ranchers of being short-sighted. Their vilification of wolves leads to harm far beyond what the loss of cattle does to their accounting books. Leopold writes, Too much safety seems to yield only danger in the long run. Perhaps this is behind Thoreau's dictum. Wildness is the salvation of the world. Perhaps this is the hidden meaning in the howl of the wolf. Long known among mountains, but seldom perceived among men. And this perception, this acceptance of wolves as fundamental parts of nature, appears to be what the Grey's characters struggle towards. The film shows gruesome violence and death caused by nature, and it also shows men fight back, their own violence towards wolves justified by the necessity to survive. And yet, after all that, we are shown beauty. A traditional survival movie would present us with gorgeous landscape shots at the beginning and progress to scenes that evoke dread and fear. Those films say, nature isn't as friendly as you think, which is really dull and obvious. The Grey, however, starts with dark scenes and unflattering shots of the environment. Otway nearly kills himself, but his suicide attempt is interrupted by the howls of wolves. As the movie progresses, the audience is shown increasingly beautiful shots of scenery. Nature, with all its contradictions, its death, its wolves, is a salvation Otway begs an absent god to give him. Do something! Come on! Prove it! Fuck faith! Earn it! Show me something real! And yet, this movie has likely done real, irreparable harm to the public's perception of wolves. The outright lies perpetuated by the film to serve its narrative are not excused by the themes. Wolves are still portrayed as man-eaters, despite Otway's insistence that they are only dangerous when close to a den. Otway's existence in the film is predicated on the supposed threat wolves pose. We see Otway shoot a wolf just before it reaches an unsuspecting oil worker. Fear of predators is one of the greatest challenges to wildlife management and conservation globally. And wolves and their ecosystems are particularly vulnerable to negative perceptions. 
Wolves are often a keystone species, meaning that compared to the collective weight of other living things in an ecosystem, wolves weigh very little. Yet, they have an outsized effect on how an ecosystem functions. Wolves manage prey populations through directly killing animals, but also by altering prey behavior, which changes how much and where prey populations forage, which in turn affects the very structure of the ecosystems. It would be too much for this video, but I encourage you to check out the link in the description that explains the trophic cascade that occurred in Yellowstone National Park when wolves were reintroduced. The key point is that wolves are critical components of healthy ecosystems. And yet, people are desperately fearful of wolves. For those who own livestock in wolf country, that fear is more for their financial security and way of life than for bodily harm. But wolf conservation in the United States has been successful mostly in spite of ill will from ranchers, not because conflict was necessarily reduced. The reason wolves can be reintroduced and managed in places despite opposition from local communities is because of broader positive public sentiment. Wolves, like all wildlife, do not belong to any one individual or organization. The government protects and manages all wildlife in the public trust, meaning wolves belong to all of us, so all of our opinions and perspectives are important. The demonization of wolves directly reduces the capacity for wolf conservation and proper ecosystem management, and this is why the gray fails. The movie's themes seem in direct opposition to its likely effects on public sentiment towards wolves. The Grey is a great film, and it deserves far more recognition than it has received. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend viewing. But despite its apparent reverence for nature, the choices The Grey makes about its portrayal of wolves paired with the complexities of its themes and tone make it a poor advocate for conservation and undermine the core of what makes this movie special. 